Thank you. So hi, my name is Kaisa, and uh, I'm originally from Estonia, but I've been living in Norway for 14 years. So I do speak English, no Norwegian, but uh, in summertime, I take lots of sports pictures, and most of the people I take pictures of speaks English. So my Norwegian just goes slightly downwards. So I thought it's nice to speak English, it's a little bit easier for me. Um, this January, I got a nice birthday present. I became a Focus Nordic ambassador on my birthday, which is really awesome. And uh, and yeah, so in winter 2019, I started taking ski pictures, and this is one of the first pictures I took of uh, Christopher Yarda. Uh, he had had injury, and he hadn't been much on skis, so it was a good combination. I discovered sports photography, and he got back on skis, so we hanged out whole winter taking pictures. But unfortunately, my computer broke down, and this is the only pictures, uh, picture I have left in good quality. So this is it. But we took lots of good pictures, and he told me that I am the best photographer he has ever taken pictures with. He was a professional skier before. So let's see, next one. This is Cotto Lagrade, if anyone knows. Uh, he was, uh, I need to check it out because I can't remember everything. Uh, former national athlete for Norway in ski cross and former free ride world tour athlete on skis. So he's pretty well known. We have some uh, good ideas for this winter to work with, but last winter we had only two days. We actually got to take pictures because it was so little snow and we want to have this clean snow without any tracks on it for the best pictures. And this is this was the first day we took pictures on. Uh, Kato says about me also that I'm one of the best photographers he's ever worked with, which is really awesome. And yeah, so he also says that it's really nice to work with me because in a very short time, in a few hours, we get lots of good pictures we can go on with. So this is taken in Vos Resort, all of the ski pictures, I think. And yeah, this is really nice one. Kato loves it. I think it's his favorite for um, this winter. This is my favorite. <laughs> um, Uh, Vos. Vos. Yeah, I live in Vos. I moved to Vos because I started skydiving. And then everything just naturally fell in part. I started taking sports pictures. Before I took like families and confirmation and such things. Not anymore. And this was like a really, really sunny day. So you can get like really nice contrast out of the pictures. But those pictures need a little bit work too on like editing and like that. So Kato didn't like that one. But when he saw it on in the on the big screen screen, then he said, Oh, that's actually quite good. So first he was like, No, this is not good, this is not good. Same with that one. But uh I like to see snow on him. <laughs> This is taken with wide angle. I think I had 7D Mark II in that time and 14 millimeter. So it's quite close. He actually on this picture, we, I didn't see him coming because he went up and he showed me like being here and then he threw some snowballs for the mark where he's gonna ski down so that he doesn't crash on me. 
But on that one, he actually almost crashed on me because he took a little, f like, little bit wrong. So he came really close to me, and it was actually like crashing picture. He tried to get away from me. So <laughs> it's, but it's only because he can't see me when he's coming. It was really, really steep there. As you can see, it's like it's extremely steep. Uh, I had like really hard time to stay up because I started like just sinking downwards all the time. So um, yeah, kayaking. This was my first ever taking pictures of kayaking. I was dreaming about it like the whole past summer, not this summer, last summer. But I didn't dare to ask anyone. I was like a little bit afraid and shy. And, and suddenly I got together with Doc Sandvik, uh, Sasha Wallace Toledano, and Mia Derdau. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to take awesome pictures and I'm, I'm really good. <laughs> uh, this is probably the only good picture I got. So it was, it, it didn't went so well. I lost half of the pictures. I lost my SD card and yeah, it's like, it was a big mess. But I stayed in contact, contact with Sasha and we started taking more pictures. This is the second time I went out with Sasha and this is Rafal. He's from uh, Poland, and yeah, and that was a good shoot. I was happy because I got that picture. This is my best kayaking picture. That one I also sent to Red Bull Illume photo, photo contest, and they are coming out with semi-finalists this Thursday. So I'm really excited to see if I'm getting anywhere with it. And that was the only picture I sent in. I should have sent one more, but uh, I didn't. And to get like picture like that, I can't just go back any time and do it again, because it's, it's so dependent on the level of the water. So like s if water is too high, too low, then you can't go there. It has to be like perfect. So I'm making notes on my pictures at home to re like remember I'm writing down what was the water levels. If it's like perfect picture like that, then I know when to go back there. Is it, there's like apps for water levels and stuff. So you can, I have like better control of if, if, if there is a point to go back there in that day. And of course it's, if it's writable. It's this summer was dry, and we had like really little water, so it we couldn't do anything almost. But anyways, skydiving. So this was the first picture I took this year. I, I can't, I'm skydiving myself, but I can't take camera up in the air yet because I don't have enough jumps for that. So I'm taking pictures on the ground, and I got that one with I think it was, I'm not sure if it was a fisheye or if it was wide angle. I think it was wide angle. And after that picture, everyone got really excited. Like, oh, that's a good picture. Let's do it more. So we started doing some more sketchy things. <laughs> uh, that one, this is Tom. So we're getting back to Tom later. Uh, this is Nick. Nick is... He is a bit nuts, he's a crazy guy, but really happy and positive all the time. So we got an idea that I'm going to lay on the grass and he's going to swoop over me. Swooping is a um, part of landing where you're going, like, you're going down and you're swooping parallel to the ground in a high speed, as far as and fast as you can. And it's something you don't want to do with anyone. It's like Nick, I trust. We can do it with Nick. So we did that whole day long and got some fun pictures. Those are with fisheye, I think it was. It's like it seems like he's far away, but he's actually like kind of this far away from me. It's really close. So it's hundred percent trust there. Because I don't really want anyone to kick his feet into my face with my camera. That's that's gonna hurt. So we 
eat that whole day long. That was fun. That was my first like planning something interesting and fun to do. And here you can see how close he can get to me. It's <laughs> I just took that picture because it shows how close you are. And of course they're moving so fast. So often I just can't move camera fast enough to move along. So there's lots of crappy pictures too. There's my feet. <laughs> uh, 17th of May, we went to do base jumping on 17th of May. It shouldn't actually be me who was there, but Alex, who had to go, he broke his ankle while landing skydiving. So they called me on the last minute if I could come. Uh, of course I could. Whole way up there I was complaining how hard it is. The terrain was really difficult. It was like only loose stones. It's not like a hiking terrain. It's only base jumpers who are going up there. Uh, it was horrible. It was really bad. And I had to walk down too. So, <laughs> so of course, they jumped in uh, national clothes, Bunad, some of them. This is uh, Erik, Erik Flüversen. He's pretty well known. And Felix. Felix, he was, I think he was competing on World War Wild wide competition in China and got second place a few years back or something like this. With wingsuiting. So here you can see a little bit down also how steep it is. Uh, on that shoot, I was really stupid because I didn't took with me my climbing equipment to fasten myself, to secure myself. So my only security was a little birch tree. I was sitting one leg on one side, the other one on another side, and hugging around the tree to take the pictures. I was shaking the whole way. And when I finally get away from there, I started so shaking and I got like a huge adrenaline rush in me. So I was like, I couldn't move myself. I was so stressed. That was really, really scary. And ever since, I've carried my climbing stuff with me just in case if there is something that I need to use it. That was a stupid thing to do, too. So, so yeah, I used two, uh, 70 to 200 millimeter on that shoot because I was pretty far away, actually. I think I was like maybe yeah, 10, 15 meters away from them. And those, it was in Granvin, if anyone knows, by the lake. And they were landing on the road down there. So I really like that picture. It's uh, really minimalistic. So yeah. Milky Wave. <laughs> oh. Milky Wave is, um, it's uh, on the river. You get the wave. Why, yeah, there's like, it's not many places to that. I think it's two places in Vos, and this one they're using for kayaking. It's like a wave that doesn't move, it's on one place. But you can, we actually managed to use it only once this summer, and this is what it, it was that time, because it's it needs lots of water. And it was only one time in the summer where it was enough water to do it. I got the call a few days back, I think it was in the weekend, that we guys are we are going in the morning, do you want to come? And in the morning I got message, no we can't go, water has dropped. So it happens like that. And there we had two hours and then water started dropping again. So this is Elena, I think she was from Germany. Uh, Doug Sandvik, that's also Milky Wave. Uh, Doug is really good with it. And I really like those like close-up kayaking pictures because you can get so much detail of the water on the picture. And I think it's so pretty. 
not everyone likes it. I've been told many times that you should take more like landscape kayaking pictures, but I like that one. So I do as I want to do, not as everyone else. This is Sasha again. Uh, menu. It's like, it's amazing how the water, like it basically folds under the boat and it's like every single picture is different. Some emotions. And you really have to love water to battle, I think. I don't like water too much. No, I'm on the land. I tried kayaking this year and I got to go underwater and roll and everything. And it's not for me. I don't like it. I'm not comfortable. I get panic. Uh, I, could, I can't hold my breath long enough. So that's, that's not for me. And I don't like to get wet. I'm like a cat. So this one is my favorite one. This one I wanted to send to Red Bull too, but I kind of forget it. So I think it's Julian there. <laughs> And uh, it's like you can see on that picture how much you have to love the water to get that splash on your face all the time. It's, I don't like it, but I like to take pictures of it. So when we are going on the picture trip, then uh, I'm running besides the river. It's, it's hard. It's every time I get scratches, I get frenchies in my eyes, I twist my ankles, I'm wet, I'm cold, I'm dirty, I fell on my belly, on my face, on my back. It's like, I tell, I, in the beginning I was complaining a lot because of it, but after I got to try battling myself, and had to carry a boat to the river, I stopped complaining because the boat is really heavy and they are carrying their boats all the time, up and down and here and there. And if there's like big drops, not everyone is paddling them. So they're taking their boat out, they're gonna carry it around and put it back in water so they can go on. And it's heavy. I ruined my neck and shoulders for like half a summer. I could barely like, my neck and then I stopped complaining because I thought it's rude yes this is Thai all, almost all of my pictures from skydiving are from uh, skydive boss uh, Tom Tom is a fun guy he's He's very often, when he's passing me, he turns his head to me and smiles. He has a like, big, creepy smile, and it's really fun. He's the only one who's doing it. Uh, this is my last kayaking shoot this year. That was maybe two weeks ago. That was the um, only picture I liked from it. Mm. This is a church drop. It was early spring or late spring. Well, you can see there's still icicles, so it was early probably. It's cold, like when they're getting out of the water, they're all freezing. Even though they have like dry suits and wool and everything, it's cold. It's really, really cold. I think this is Andy. Um, there's like those places that I also have to like a little bit hang over to get the picture. Um, it is a stupid thing to do, generally. If, if you fall in without any floating equipment, then it's not good there's a big chance that I'm going to drown. I can't get out. I was that drop, that, that's the one I mm, sent to the Red Bull, the blaze. And when I took the Red Bull picture, uh, I actually, I ended up on the wrong side of the river. I was told to go to the other side. 
and I was afterwards also told like why why were you there? You should have gone to the other side. I'm like, I don't know, I just ended up in the wrong place. But it's it's okay. I'm gonna go to the other side next time. I'm really happy that I didn't, because this was the good side. It was really high up, I didn't get down to the river, but I used the uh, Dela Lens and I got a good shot. So now I'm always going to the wrong side. It's the same drop. Yeah. Where are you? Uh, Roundals Elve. Roundals Elve. Elva. Roundal. Roundal. It's, it's in Vos. And I live next to it. So it's really easy for me to go. It's. Uh, I mainly I use 70 to 200 because it's um river is like kind of I have tried wide angle but I don't get anything that I like out of it so I tend to use there I should have used something wider because I didn't get the whole drop on the picture if it's it this is the highest drop in Vos. And there I should have actually wanted to get the whole thing on the picture to show how high it is, which I didn't do. But I like that picture because there's a face in the stone. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh and also on that drop uh it was only Sasha and Manu who Manu is in back, who did it, and he broke his paddle. Because the impact when you fall in is quite big. So somehow he broke his paddle. This drop is called nose breaker. Because many people break their nose there. But the rest of the guys didn't go there. They just they climb around and came down. And of course, before they went on the nosebreaker, there was like long discussion. Sasha, uh, Manu was on on the this side of the river. Sasha was there. You can't hear anything. It's it's so noisy. But they have like their own sign language. It's so cool to follow, and they understand like everything they say to each other, like every single detail. It's very technical, and you have to be really good to do that. So that's yeah. <laughs> it was uh, it was scary to watch it too. Now uh, this is further up. I I yeah. It was the same day actually. Um, it was the river had like a bunch of small drops. I think it was three or four. I'm not sure seems like it was three from here and it was it was really pretty place and I really want to go back there and do it again and better maybe find another angle and with that one too I'm probably the first person to choose that angle instead of going in front and get like everything nicely on the picture but I'm thinking like everyone else is doing it I'm gonna do it differently I'm gonna go over there and take it sideways and yeah, I like to discover new angles because kayakers, they do take pictures themselves and they have all their little cameras on the helmet, but they all take the pictures always from the same spot. That's comfortable for them. That's like if they, they have to come out of the boat to take the picture. So uh, I think for me, it's good that I'm not paddling myself because I'm discovering new angles and I have to work differently to get to places and figure out how to do it. Yes, I have to talk to with them before because I can't talk with them when they're on the river. Yes, we are agreeing the spots before. And then before the drop, they're waiting for me because I'm running back to my car and 
driving on. It depends how long it, the drive is. And it's either them waiting me or me waiting them. So, um, but we do agree everything before. We discuss everything before where we stop, where we're going to take pictures. And who's going to be there, who's going to do it, how many. And they also like give me a little time between every person so that I can take picture of everyone because if they're coming like after one and one and one then I just miss some things. Yeah. Yeah. Usually I'm driving. Uh, because it's it's quite long ways to just run by the river. It's it's the landscape is it's just horrible. It's it's not hiking landscape. It's like it's really wild, rocky, lots of hidden holes. You just don't want to run the whole river. Plus, I'm I am going to be really slow if I'm going to do that. So this is the first drop in Roundals River. That's uh, I tried to get like picture from the top, so I had to al also like get as far as possible, so I had my camera like that to <laughs> take it. Um, I think I used 45 millimeter on that one. And then there's those fun places where the water starts like swirling around and trying to go back upwards for some reason. And those places they love to just play in and just do stuff and play and jump and do things. But no one considered it as a good spot to take pictures at. And I'm like, I want to take pictures over there. I'm like, what? Yes. And then they gave me a little show there. They were just paddling around in one place, and then I got that shot, and I really like it. It's um, Everyone thinks that to get a good shot, you need a big drop. You don't. It's you need just as little as that to get a good picture. This is Stranda Elve. I have taken pictures, there's only one, there are only ones. That was that time. I can't remember what his name was. Maybe it was Andy. This is Ron Dolan again. This is where I started trying to take some like little bit landscape like pictures but not too much landscape just a little bit landscape and i think that one turned out fine because it's like it's really nice what water does over there and it's green and pretty it's lots of going on but not too much this is uh matias he's from chile and this one is it's same the uh, first drop in the river that's far up. That picture, it's probably it's like everyone has that picture, exactly the same picture from there, because this is like the popular spot to take that picture from. So, not this year, but next summer, I'm gonna go to the other side somehow, I don't know how yet and try to take a picture from there and see what happens. Because I have no idea how it looks from the other side. They have to just basically climb there and... I have considered to learn enough paddling so that I can actually cross the river without problems. I've tried it, it's really difficult. The waves are just flipping me immediately when I get into the flow. So. Uh, Yeah, I need to figure out something. That's the same spot. We did, like, it was only me and Matthias there. Usually we want to have at least two people who are paddling for safety. One is for safety and the other one is doing something. Because if something gets goes wrong, then you need help. 
So that was a little bit also like, um, I trust him because he knows what he's doing, but with someone who's not as good as he is, I wouldn't do it. Like I would say that we need more people because it's stupid and dangerous. Um, see, that's the same place, but a different angle. It's like this, you can do so many things in the same place, so many different pictures, but you just need to find some different angles and that's what I like to do. I don't think anyone has taken picture with that angle over there. I ha haven't seen picture because everyone wants to get the whole drop on the picture. It's like squeeze everything in one picture. I'm not so worried about it. But I also got some negative feedback on that picture. They say that he's going to have a flat landing on this picture and flat landing is something that's not good. And Kayaking is very technical, and same with skiing. I don't usually never post a picture before talking with the athlete before, before to get like tell me them to tell me that okay this picture is okay that one is not because I'm like that uh, or I'm like that or it's like a technical mistake they have done and they don't want to show it that they're making mistakes. Everyone wants to be perfect. So, uh, but this one I just posted because I liked it. And he was happy with the picture. It was another person who pointed it out that he's gonna have flat landing and with flat landing you get lots of impact and it hurts. And that's technically not correct thing to do. Here's a river almost empty. This is a church, church drop. Um, let's see, usually the water is up on the rocks. Like I couldn't be there because it's water over there. So ho totally up there and a little bit more. So this is like how much the water dropped this summer because of the little snow and almost no rain. But still, oh, did I add on two pictures from there? That was stupid. Okay. Yes, <laughs> this is Thai again, like a chicken. Yeah, we just, in the end of the summer, it was really fun. The whenever I showed up to the skydiving club with my camera, I could just go on the landing field without saying anything and everyone knew, oh, Kaisa's over there. And they just started posing to me. It was really fun. We didn't have to agree anything. It was just pure fun. And yeah, I think I have a couple more. Tom. This is Nils. Nils, he's from Denmark. I think he was five times world champion with free fly. This is movement in the air. So he's really good. He was my instructor when I took my skydiving license. He's a really nice guy. He was really happy to get some photos too. <gasps> Today we decided to do some smoky photos. Um, Suddenly we got an idea, like I was bored, I wanted to do something different, something new, and then uh, Alex said, why don't you use smoke? I'm like, yeah, sure. And we just asked permission to do it, we got permission, and we laid like small, s there's like, you can't see the pockets now, but it's like the club gets them free, the orange smokes, and they last about three or five minutes. But the thing with it was that we didn't consider that every single tiny bit of wind blows it away and it gets like completely on the ground. So this was probably the best picture I got from there. Here you can see how low the snow uh, smoke got when there's like a little bit wind comes in. It just blows it away, gone. 
We tried another time too, but just didn't work. But it was really fun to do it. Then I tried some. I was photographing extreme sport vehicle also this year for the first time. It was fun, but it was like a full week of work unpaid. So I'm not going to do it next year. But this is not from the Vecco. This is Frank. I don't even know what his name is. Uh, we just me, Frank, and Stia. We got out. I got a bike too. It was really fun. And yeah, tried to do some shoots. This is with wide angle, 14 millimeter, I think it was. Same with that one. <laughs> there I was laying on the ground and the big ants were biting me. <laughs> it hurt so bad <laughs> and it stink. The smell was so strong. It's like, oh, I was like almost like passing out, like, come on, come faster because I, the smell was so extremely strong. It was so bad, <laughs> but it was worth it. Uh, this is called uh, uh, low pass. This is when the plane drops people out in, a, I think it was one and a half thousand feet. How much is it? Like four or five hundred meters or something like that. So they have to like pull out their canopy immediately when they come. So they wanted to have picture from there. So it's, uh, yeah, it's really low. This is Nick. I don't even know what they were doing on that day. I think some sort of video, so I just went and took a picture of it. He was jumping on his belly on the trampolino to make it look like he's flying. And yeah, it was fun. So we are generally having lots of fun, fun while taking pictures. It's not like a serious business. It's all about fun for everyone. This was the season ending party in Hop. In Hop is something that happens only in Vos. It's created and invented in Vos, where you are jumping to somewhere else or landing somewhere else than to the skydiving club, like another destination. But to do that, you need to get permission, permission from multiple places make everything right. Before it was illegal to do, now it's legal and it's a thing, but it's only thing, a thing in Vos, nowhere else. So it's quite interesting fact. Uh, those who are really good got to land on that road with the red carpet. Rest of the people landed far back on the field. because you need to have a full control over where you're going to land. Nick, I really like to take portraits in between and get some emotions and stuff on the picture. So it, like it tells a little story of every time I've taken pictures. Here Nick comes in and Ty is after him. And what happened, Nick forgot to remove himself from the road and Ty crashed straight into him. So it was a little crash. I don't know if they got hurt, but everyone ran to help them. It was lots of, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Just a random picture. And this is Felix again. He was happy to see me. This is uh, everyone were packing their parachutes on the field to get it back packed before they're going on the party and having fun. So it's all safe and not gonna be destroyed somehow. And that's about it. This is my last picture. Questions? Uh, I have a one DX Canon. I've shot Canon 
very long time, since 2009, maybe. It's like only Canon. I don't like changes, I don't change my things. <laughs> Uh, I am not a technical person. I don't like too many things. I have my favorite things. I usually have 70 to 200, which covers, like for me, it covers everything. And then I have a wide angle with me, which is good to get like close ups, like it fits for extreme sport to get like really close. And I have 45 millimeter, which I barely use. I almost never use it. It's it basically because it's so slow can't keep up with sharpening so I can't really use it it's only for like uh, slow things but yeah I don't like to have too many things in my back because my back gets heavy and it's like with kayaking it's lots of running it just gets heavy and difficult But, yeah, anyone else? YouTube, ooh. Probably 72 to 200 because I'm so used to it. I just, I just like it. It's a nice lens to have. Mikael, questions? <laughs> well, if there's no questions, then I think we're done. I hope you like my pictures. Uh, hmm? As much as possible. To get, to make sure that I get the shot. So it's high speed. Always, almost. Yeah. But it's generally just like I didn't even know that I like taking pictures of sports before I suddenly did it. And now I like it so much it gives me the kind of kick I get after I've been on the shoot. I'm happy and full of energy and just really, really, really happy. I can't get the same feeling out of taking family photos so it's it's all fun for me and all fun for all of them i do have made lots of new friends i've become really known in Vos with my pictures which is awesome everyone knows me i have no idea who everyone else is <laughs> but yeah it's um, i'm happy that i'm doing it and I'm happy that I'm appreciated. One thing I want to point out is that uh, as a female sports photographer, I often feel like guys don't take me seriously, which is really sad. I've got some stupid compliments about it, bad compliments. and. Uh, but the important thing is just not let it in and keep doing what you're doing. But it sometimes it kind of like breaks my heart. I get really sad if they're coming with something stupid like, oh guys, are you hanging out only with guys? I'm, yeah, but there's not much girls who are doing those things. And of course I'm hanging out with guys. Um, but Generally, I have my favorite athletes, some like uh, Kato, the skier. He appreciates what I'm doing and he knows that I'm good. If there's a person who doesn't respect me in the way I want them to respect me, I'm not going on the second shoot with them. I just, I don't need people to just sit down on me and think, 
you know. It has happened. One time we had a little bit bad understanding. We had to meet up on the next spot, but when I got there, everyone had left. Then I was angry. So that's not cool. And I didn't went back with those people anymore to take pictures. But generally it goes fine. But I do know that there is so little female sports photographers. Last week on Red Bull Illume, they announced the semi-finalists to one category and out of 2022 20, finalists, there were only one girl. So it's very man dominated. The same as extreme sport itself. It's mainly man. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? No, no. I can't even talk with her. I have seen her when I was talking. Ja, ja. Det blir tikken det. <laughs> ja. Yes. Okej. Okay. Yay.